We're so good and democratic in the West, it's not like we support any dictators. Oh yeah, we actually have. And here's the top 10. 10. Hosni Mubarak, the former dictator of Egypt, for 30 years reigning with an iron fist, killing thousands, torturing hundreds of thousands, and funded by the US and other Western powers. 9. Augusto Pinochet. In 1973, the CIA cooperated with Augusto Pinochet to change the government, from a leftist government to a military dictatorship. Over the reign of 17 years, there were numerous acts of torture, executions, and even secret concentration camps. Documents released 30 years later told of how the CIA actually helped to set up this system of repression and human suffering. 8. The Samosa family. Basically, Nicaragua's answer to North Korea's Kim Dynasty, a repressive, tyrannical regime which tried to drain the nation completely of its wealth to support their corrupted ways. 7. Park Chung Hee. In the 1960s, South Korea hadn't recovered fully from the Korean War. However, that all changed when a dictator seized power and brought about a long period of prosperity within South Korea. But of course, his dictatorship had ridiculous laws, tortured its critics, and the reaction from the West? Well, at least they're not commies. 6. Suharto The Indonesian dictator who plundered 35 billion from the Indonesian economy carried out numerous crimes and slaughtered 1 to 2 million ethnic Chinese. He was put in power by the CIA, and when the British got involved, they decided to run propaganda against the critics of the dictator as opposed to operating any form of justice. And Britain had even supplied them with guns, military vehicles, and fighter jets. The United States encouraged them to invade East Timor, and Australia brought the rights to mining. 5. Islam Karimov a dominating dictator ruling over Uzbekistan. The United States in their war in Afghanistan required the assistance of Uzbekistan as a neighbouring nation to Afghanistan. So if you want to know where your money's going, it's going towards torture, harassment, imprisonment, executions, including people who are being boiled alive. And if that wasn't good enough, well guess what? They also forced children to work in slave-like conditions. And this regime has been called one of the world's most repressive dictatorships. 4. Fulgencio Batista, the military dictator of Cuba who ruled before the Castro Revolution, who ruled with American support and with an iron fist, running what has been called a mafia state, corrupt to the core, full of all sorts of low-life criminals. Corruption, torture, execution, and even using his planes to bomb entire villages. 3. The Al Khalifa family. The repressive regime in Bahrain is a strong ally of the West, but that doesn't stop them from using detention and torture, from threatening rape within prison, electrocution, burning away people's genitals as a method of torture. And like many dictatorships that are allies to Britain and America and other powers, we sell them millions of pounds worth of military equipment every year. Due to certain loopholes within legality, the United States can still sell weapons to them, despite the Congress trying to block it. And the UK sold in 2013 one billion pounds worth of fighter jets. The Kingdom of Bahrain put down its Arab Spring by military force. The crackdown saw thousands of people imprisoned and brutally tortured for simply standing up against the state. And strangely, the EU and the United States remain silent on this issue. 2. Gaddafi The continual violations of human rights, conflict, torture, and the aggression of the leader gave Gaddafi the nickname Mad Dog. But in 1999, Tony Blair brought Gaddafi and Libya out of the cold. By opening up Libya to new trade, 
and cooperating on oil rights, Britain helped to lobby other Western nations to accept Libya back into the fold. And this cooperation went far deeper than you may imagine, including where British intelligence would get involved in rounding up dissidents. Those critics of Gaddafi, who had fled Libya and persecution, disappeared by British intelligence and taken back to Libya. And many of these people, when they were returned to Libya itself, were left to starve or tortured horrendously in Gaddafi's prisons. 1. The Saudi Royal Family In many ways, Saudi Arabia brings together the worst elements of Iran, Afghanistan and other repressive regions of the world. This nation has the death penalty for so many crimes, from homosexuality to women speaking out against their husbands, and for that matter, women who are raped, who don't follow the correct procedure according to Quranic law. And of course, women have practically no rights. Migrant workers are routinely tortured and sexually abused, and young children are frequently imprisoned, without trial, and executed. And you don't even need to be told what the crime is that you've been accused of. You're given no chance of defence. You're not made aware of what you've supposedly done against the nation of Saudi Arabia. They even kill people for utterly imaginary crimes, like the crime of being a sorceress or witch. So basically, it's one of the most repressive regimes in recent history. And of course, they are heavily supported by the European Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. The UK has an annual trade with Saudi Arabia of 15 billion and frequently sells it arms. The US counts Saudi Arabia amongst its closest allies and has never spoken out against its human rights abuses. In fact, George W. Bush, throughout the war on terror, never mentioned the word terrorism in the same sentence as Saudi Arabia or the Saudi royal family. Politicians in the West typically say that Saudi Arabia is a force for good within the Middle East, and yet it extends its influence beyond its borders by spreading Wahhabi propaganda, by propping up puppet regimes like that of Yemen and sending its own troops over the border to keep order. And its extremist version of Islam helped to create the Taliban, ISIS, and numerous other problems within the region. The Saudi government itself funds Wahhabi propaganda to be sent to mosques all over the world and to prisons all over the world. Along with the United States, they funded the Taliban, the Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, and numerous other extremist groups, trying to use them as political tools to extend their influence in the Middle East and beyond. Of course!